Majesty, the King. The King! The King. Ladies and gentlemen, should you so desire, you now have your chairman's permission to smoke. Services Club to welcome to this luncheon today the very gallant pilots who fought in the Battle of Britain and the many very distinguished guests who have come here to honour them. I think that all other branches of the services who have been at this club on similar occasions from time to time will agree with me wholeheartedly that this is the most important luncheon we have had at this club. And I am therefore very glad indeed that a distinguished member of the War Cabinet, Sir John Anderson, has come to propose this toast, and that Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding, who was Commander-in-Chief of the Fighter Command from 1936 to 1940, I have very great pleasure in calling upon Sir John Anderson. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, in proposing this toast, I want to say a few words to you about the Battle of Britain and about the part played in that battle by the pilots of Fighter Command. Never had valor, no, not ours, before, done aught like this upon the land or main, where not to be overcome, were to do more than all the conquests former kings did gain. That, ladies and gentlemen, was written uh, by John Dryden in the year 1666 in his book, Annus Mirabilis. It might have been the domination of the world. I am proud, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to have the privilege this afternoon of proposing this toast. I was, in fact, as a minister, very much concerned with all that led up to the Battle of Britain. For I was the minister responsible uh, for civil defense, and I remained so responsible until after the climax of the Battle of Britain with the greatest determination. Before they admitted, before they had to admit defeat, they had lost no fewer than 2,400 machines over a space of some 10 weeks. And they had probably lost seven pilots for every one of ours. Our losses <coughs> amounted to 375 pilots and in the period of the battle, by day, <coughs> no fewer than 1,700 civilians were killed, which compares with 12,000 killed in the same period by night, and that comparison is in itself a high tribute to the effectiveness of our fighter pilots. <laughs> to be able uh, to associate with this toast, Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding. it 
was who bore the whole burden of organization, of fighter command, right up to the most critical period and beyond it. Uh, to congratulate him on the signal recognition that was paid to his work as a air officer commanding fighter command by his elevation uh, to the peerage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you who know your Shakespeare, Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the toast of the pilots of fighter command who took part in the Battle of Britain. And I associate it with the name of Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding and uh, Group Captain Milan. The toast says the Battle of Britain pilots are coupled with the name Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding and Group Captain Milan. Pilot. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for our Chief Marshal, Lord Dowding. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my lord, ladies and gentlemen, I feel that I'm here under false pretenses because there's somebody here who has a better right to speak on this occasion than I have. I refer to the founder of the Air Force, the man who dug the foundations, the man who laid them truly, the foundations on which this magnificent edifice was erected. But since I am here, I must do what I can to reply for my fellow guests and thank our kind hosts for their entertainment today and to thank Sir John Anderson for his words of recognition insofar as I am able to. When I came here today, I hadn't got any sort of note. I didn't know what I was going to say. Because it's not the sort of speech that you can prepare for. It isn't a question of working up. Chairman, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for Group Captain Milan. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very deeply honored in being allowed to say a few words today on behalf of the pilots. Um, I'd also like to thank our hosts for making this gathering possible. It is a great pleasure for us pilots to be able to meet, in spe uh, especially under these pleasant circumstances, once in a while. I hope we'll have a very big meeting after the war. One sees many old friendly faces around. Um, we had a similar gathering last year, and some of those faces aren't here today. Uh, one or two have paid the, su the supreme sacrifice. Others have gone to other battlefronts. Uh, those who've gone to the Middle East, uh, we're pleased to note, have been able to materially assist in persuading the Italians that we make better allies than enemies. <laughs> Uh, they can't be here today, but I expect they're very happy where they are. Um, we pilots have come in for far more than our fair share of glamour and glory. Uh, I don't think the press and the public fully realize just how much credit is due to the planning and executive staffs and the ground crews and all the very, very intricate link-up of this fighter organization, which was put to the full test during the Battle of Britain. In that connection, I see many faces around me today that were linked up with it. I see um, uh, Air Marshal Sir Leslie Gossage, who was my first Air Officer Commanding in charge of uh, 11 Group when I first left the FTS. 
uh, and it brings back memories. In fact, he had me on the mat once for low flying. 